I just found out that you can now ride a roller coaster while wearing a VR headset. So rather than enjoying the normal everyday scenery as you ride said coaster, you can instead be inside a fighter jet fighting aliens. And yes, I know this is not breaking news to the world, but since I've recently just ordered an HTC Vive, I've kind of been looking into all this kind of stuff. Just in case you didn't know, now you know. If you want to, you can watch a video showcasing the VR roller coaster through the link in the description. Yes, the graphics looks like they're straight out of PlayStation 2, but the concept is still pretty interesting. Moving forward, let's talk about the SpaceX and why landing a rocket in the middle of the ocean is kind of a big deal. Because if you haven't heard, SpaceX made history last Friday by successfully landing the first stage of an orbital rocket on a barge in the middle of the ocean. First of all, well, it's really cool. But second of all, it dramatically reduces the cost of the entire operation. You see, being able to reuse the first stage of a rocket can save over $59 million per launch. That is because it costs $60 million just to build the damn thing, but only $200,000 to fuel it back up. Taking into consideration the cost of inspections and minor repairs, you might get away with the next launch costing you less than a half a million dollars, which is considerably less than a building an entirely new rocket. Just to have it go into space, be another piece of space debris, or for that matter, crashing back down to the ocean. But landing a rocket in the middle of the ocean takes things to an entirely different level because that means they can use less fuel during launch, carry more cargo while they're doing it, and be able to achieve higher orbits without having to worry about returning to the launch pad. Not that this is gonna mean that we're gonna have $200 flights to the space station to go on vacation anytime soon, but it is exciting to see technology advance towards this goal. I just, I really wanna to go to space. On a topic that's a little less exciting for me, I give you batteries made of bacteria. A group of researchers from the Netherlands have came up with a new way to store energy by use of bacteria. Called bioelectrochemical batteries, it consists of two parts that work together to store and release energy, like a battery does. Through testing, they found that the new concept would work well for solar powered applications as charging it takes longer than normal batteries that we use today. And on top of that, there are some issues with efficiency being much lower as well, but it has proven to be able to handle more charges while still being able to maintain performance, which is why it is a perfect match for solar charging. Still really early in development, but they could prove to be cheaper to make while having similar capacities and performance once developed more. So about a year ago, some Chinese researchers genetically modified a human embryo in an attempt to remove genes specific to a dangerous blood disorder. That modification sparked a huge debate on the morals of the practice because the same methods could also be used to enhance human traits like intelligence or beauty. Well, now a new set of Chinese researchers are going down the same exact path by modifying a human embryo to be resistant to the HIV virus. Using 26 different fertilized eggs eggs from donors, they were successfully able to modify four of them to resist the virus. Now keep in mind that these donated eggs were already considered unusable because they had an extra set of chromosomes and they were donated specifically for doing this kind of research. And after they completed the testing, the eggs were destroyed within three days. So you can put your pitchforks away right now. Some of the other embryos, however, did end up with a few unplanned mutations from the modifications. And those results actually mimic those of the research done the year before, which gives them a great focal point for perfecting the process, knowing that it was just not a fluke the first time around. Personally, I kind of see this as a starting point where we initially want to use these methods to cure diseases or help people live longer, healthier lives. Then within a short time frame, we end up genetically modifying humans that are stronger, faster, smarter and worship con. Speaking of genetics, we have officially been able to store a digital image to a strand of DNA and then recover that image perfectly, which is freaking crazy because the amount of data that can be stored on a DNA is astronomical. And then we're figuring this out. Well, that's all just amazing to me. To give you an idea, this faint little smear of pink that you see in the image over here has the ability to store over 10 terabytes of data. Now, of course, reading and writing that data is super complicated. So don't expect to have that kind of storage in your home PC anytime soon. I will link in the description for you to read all of the technical and science details if you're interested in that sort of thing. But the basics include them taking the digital ones and zeros and converting them to the four basic building blocks of DNA through use of Huffman coding, which is a lossless data compression method, which 
really this sparked two questions for me. One, could this mean in the future that people will be able to design programs or data in general that could configure DNA in a way that could produce a different type of life form? I know that's kind of way out there, but I can't help but to wonder this type of thing. And two, could you modify human DNA to store a certain amount of data without altering the person's attributes? I don't know why you'd want to do this, but I just kind of wonder if there's enough space in a DNA strand to allow this sort of thing to happen without giving us like a third arm or a second head. Okay, that's all for today, folks. But before you go, I wanna circle back to the topic of VR. As I said in the beginning, I have officially placed my order for the HTC Vive headset. I'm completely excited about this and I cannot wait for it to arrive, even though their own website can't even give me a ship date yet. But in preparation, I have ordered a bunch of different cables and a surround sound gaming headset so I can enjoy the VR to its fullest potential in my large open area of my basement. So my question to you is, what kind of VR content would you like to see? And if you don't care about VR, well, it's coming to this channel either way. So just don't click on those videos. So I plan on doing some gaming demos, recording the setup process, and maybe even doing some live streams in the future, maybe way in the future. But what I want to know is, do you have any burning questions that you would like to have answered in a video? Or maybe some kind of an entertaining idea that I, I could also use as well. I am really excited to jump into VR because I am a complete VR virgin. I have never used or tested any type of VR headset before, so this will be a completely new experience for me. I can't wait to share that experience with you. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits. Like and subscribe to this video below and have a great day.